What's happening, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are talking about how operating a martial arts school is just like training martial arts, or at the very least, has way more similarity than difference. Stick around. You'll see what we mean by that. Of course, I am joined by Andrew. You can see him on the screen if you're watching. What's going on, Andrew? Not much. How are you today, Jeremy? I am great. Andrew Adams, my co-host on many of these episodes. I'm Jeremy Lesniak, founder here at Whistlekick, where everything we do is in support of the traditional martial arts. And if you're new to the show or what we do, or you just figure, you know, like, I, I haven't listened for a while. What's going on? Go to whistlekick.com. It's our online home. All the things that we do are over there. And it is a steadily growing list because we have more people coming in. They're like, hey, what about this? And so we work on it and we do more stuff because we love traditional martial arts. And so that's why we do all the things we do to support you, your traditional martial artists of the world. If you want to support us, you got a few things you could do. Uh, the easiest one, just share this episode. Send it to somebody that you train with or know that you think would like to hear more. And then maybe the two of you can discuss what we talked about. Remember, nothing we ever put on this show is meant to say this is what is or what you should believe. It's meant to spark thought and discussion. And sometimes we tackle some heavier subjects. And I just want to make sure that we're reinforced there. We're not telling you what to believe because that would be really arrogant. And that's not a thing that we do. Of course, other ways you could support us. We have a Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. And if you want to pick something up, training program or shirt or whatever, at whistlekick.com, you can use the code podcast15 to save 15%. Andrew? Yes. Running a martial arts school is super easy and everybody should do it. And it takes like five seconds out of your day. Well, I don't know that I'd go so far as to say that. Ten seconds? Yeah, maybe. That'd be a little closer. <laughs> it's complex, isn't it? You run Absolutely. you run a school and you've run things before, right? Like anybody who's run anything knows that it takes time. And of yeah. course, we're, we're, it's not to say that teaching is simple and easy. But if you are a an instructor, a paid instructor, and you're not running the school, that's only a subset of what running a martial arts school is, right? Like, we're not talking about teaching being easy. We're talking about, we're not talking about anything being easy. We're yeah. not talking about this uh, simply as, that's, that's the word I was looking for. We're not talking about this simply as the instructor side. Because the majority of martial arts schools out there are smaller, and the instructor is the school owner. Yeah. Yeah, and so they're doing and, double duty. And and I would go so far as to say that in regards to running a school, honestly, in my opinion, the teaching part, that is the easy part. Like it's everything else that yeah. comes with it that can be difficult. The, the teaching part, for the most part, starts at the beginning of class and ends at the end of class. Correct. While there may be other responsibilities, teaching is teaching. Operating a school, operating any business is pretty close to a 24-7 proposition. Yeah. I've run a number of businesses over the years, including a martial arts school, and it can be exhausting. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't I don't run a school right now. Um, you know, I, I help my uh, my instructor with the school, but, you know, it's not my school. I a lot of the stuff right currently right now I don't have to deal with, but I have in the past. So. Absolutely. So you get it. Yeah. You get it. And so the what we're going to talk about today is this notion that while operating a martial arts school isn't simple or easy, the very skill sets that we learn coming up as martial artists can be applied to operating a martial arts school, uh, just as they can be applied to anything. So, yeah. Yeah. I think the way the way we train there was a lot of synergy between the way we train and schools that are run very well and do very well. Absolutely. Let's start with, with some of the, the personality traits, the skill set, the toolbox that are relevant in both. Let's talk about that overlap of the Venn diagram. Mm -hmm. uh, persistence? Yep. Per persistence for sure. Nobody's starting a martial arts school and it's successful, you know, day one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If it is, you you did work before you called it day one. Day day negative 400, right? Uh, creativity. You can't do the exact same things you've always done and expect different results. Yep. 
Yeah. Right? Einstein's definition of insanity. Uh, what are some of the other things? Um, consistency. Hmm. Consistency, both, you know, and in terms of your training, you are not going to get as much if you're only going to class, you know, one day a month or one day every other week. Um, you know, you you won't have that steady progress, which is another one that that I would consider. You have to show up to teach and you can't change yeah. your schedule every six weeks because yeah. it suits you. It, exactly. I mean, and that's not to say and, and being there for class all the time, you know, just canceling class all the time. Uh, you know, it's one thing if it's, I mean, we're in the Northeast, so snowstorms happen, you know, I'm not talking, a, a school may have to close on a day because there's bad snowstorm, sure. but, we're, you know, if you are constantly canceling class for whatever reason, that's something that you can't get to class for. Uh, that, I don't feel like teaching tonight. Class yeah, is exactly. Canceled. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it doesn't show consistency for the students, and it would be same for yourself if you were training. It's not consistent, yep. you know. How about new information? Learning, continuing to evolve. Yeah. Just as we should be striving to be better martial artists, a martial arts school owner should be striving to be a better school owner and developing new skill sets around business ownership. There's a kind of a half joke cliche observation in the martial arts world that most martial arts school owners are bad business people. Mm -hmm. We've probably all heard that said. No, I don't know if I would say most, but certainly a a, uh, a significant portion. It's a, yeah. it's a not trivial number of, of them. And I think it's because they don't actually want to own a business. Well, and I think, I don't know that it's that they don't want to own a business. And maybe you're correct. That might be true. But I think a lot of it goes down to always doing what you've always done. And that change is hard. But when you take that mindset from running your business over to how you train, you know, if you go into class and teach every single class the exact same thing every single class, the students will get better eventually. You know, they, they will get better they at stick the, around. the thing that you teach, but they're only going to know those things. And I don't know any instructor that does this. I'm just using this as an analogy. Sure. But instead, you go to class, and every class, you teach something different. You know, maybe your warm up is the same, but what you're teaching changes and evolves because there's other stuff to learn. If you run your business this one way and you always run it that way and you don't ever look at anything else, I think that can be a problem. Can be. Notice how, notice how I said can sure. be a problem. Sure. Now, when I say that there are a chunk of martial arts school owners that don't want to be school owners, I mean that m many of them, the ones that I'm talking about, would say, I just want to teach. Mm, I They've constructed saying. a framework where they get to teach. Maybe they make a little bit of money teaching, but they don't want to do the rest. Yeah. Okay. They don't want to care about marketing. They want. They don't want to worry about, uh, file. You know, tax filings. They don't want to worry about ordering equipment. They don't care about any of that. They just want to teach. Okay. That's not owning a business. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. The teaching part's the best part, but as an aside, the stronger your business, the more people you'll reach. The more people you'll have to teach, the better an instructor you will get. The more all those things that you say you want can happen. Yep. So keep that in mind. Yep. And, and and again with training, maybe there's and t and running your school, maybe there's something that you're not as good at. Mm. Whether it's martial art wise, you know, like I I happen to know there's one form that I'm just I know I'm not very good at it. Yep. And so you know, I let people know when I'm teaching that particular form, like you know, this is not my best form. Like, I mean, I'll t go help you with the moves because you're you know you're working on it, but like this is not my my the best thing thing I'm best at. Sure. There's nothing wrong with as a school owner recognizing, you know what? There's one aspect of running the school that I'm not good at, and maybe there's someone else that would that would be better at it than mm. me. Right. What else? We, we we started to take some tangents there. I want to make sure we, we hit everything. We talked about persistence, consistency, creativity. How about attention to detail? Yeah, being diligent about little things. Yeah, I think that's so important. You know, 
as we get better as martial artists, we start to refine smaller and smaller details. Okay, the toes are pointed here. They need to be pointed, you know, 15 degrees over here, or this knee needs to move out. A little bit of rotation in this hand. Don't look here, look here, right? Like details that if we tried to give them to, don't ever try to give super details to like brand new students, right? When you're, we're learning something, we've got to learn the macro before we get down to the micro. But as we progress, we recognize, hey, well, there are all these little refinements that come in. As a business owner, here's here's the one that most schools are probably going to be familiar with, keeping things clean. Yep. It's one thing to make sure the floor is swept. <clears throat> it's another to make sure that it's mopped periodically. It's another to make sure that the bathroom is clean or that, you know, the, the dust bunnies behind the chairs are swept up, right? Like there's there's finer and finer detail. And just as learning those nuances in your forms, your techniques, et cetera, showcase you as a better caliber martial artist, so does attention to detail showcase you as a better caliber business owner. Yeah. It doesn't absolutely. necessarily mean you're doing all of it yourself, but it does need to get done to make that progress. Yeah. Yep, Imagine that. somebody coming in and they're evaluating your school uh, to to train there. And they go and they sit down and they notice that, you know, underneath the chairs are gross. And they go to get a drink of water and there are no cups. Mm -hmm. And they use the bathroom and the bathroom's gross. I'm not coming back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like when you go for a job interview, you dress, you should theoretically, be dressing nice, right? You want to show your potential employer your best side. It's the same when you have a potential client, whether it be student or parent, come in the door. Um, and then the other thing is once they are there, good, clear communication, yep. it, it, which holds true when you're training. You same have to. So what, if I'm teaching someone how to do something and mm. I just say, uh, move your foot. Okay, move my foot. Which way? Well, duh, move your foot that way. What way? Move it to the right. That's better communication. You know, uh, you know, uh, your arm is in the wrong place. Okay, well, how is it in the wrong place, right? Clear communication is needed when you're training, when you're learning as a student. Um, and when you are a school owner, you have to have really good communication skills. Mm whether it's coming from you or from so someone that you delegate to do communication for your business, you have to be able to give clear communication to your students and parents of students so that they know what's going on with the school. Most problems in any business originate back to communication. Yeah, I, that does not surprise me. Right. Uh, I've owned a number of businesses. I've consulted with businesses for a very long time. And while there is a, a small excerpt of problems that originate from people just being jerks, it's usually not that they're being a jerk. In fact, it's 90 plus percent. It tracks back to communication. What, that student left your school because they were unhappy about something that they didn't tell you about, about that you could have corrected. Or you were pushing them in a way that they weren't comfortable with. You didn't tell them why you were doing it. They didn't tell you they were uncomfortable. The parent that sits down and they see, you know, this place is filthy. They leave and you reach out to them and you say, hey, you know, what did you think? Oh, it's not for us. Not, uh, I'm, I'm really concerned that your space seems filthy. What's mm. going on with that? But you didn't even realize because you never sit in those chairs. Yeah. No yeah. one told you, right? It can all be tracked back to communication, usually a lack of communication. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's review the list. Persistence, consistency, diligence, mm -hmm. communication, creativity. Let's talk about the things that it's not. Okay. Great. Uh, gimmicks. Mm. Um, or, or trickery. Ooh, new whistle kick offering. Open your open a martial arts school and have 500 students in 12 months. 
If only it were that easy. Just pay us however much we would need to pay 500 people to come take your classes for one plus day. a little bit more. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. There, there, There is no one size fits all. In no, let's define a gimmick because different people have different definitions of what a gimmick is. Some of the okay. things that some schools work very to a very effective result, others would look at and say, that feels gimmicky to me. Hmm. I think a gimmick is anything that is inauthentic to how you operate. I may have a school that is very simple, what some would call very classic or traditional. Mm -hmm. um you know two nights a week and we're doing this and this and very few kids in the kids class it's primarily adults and you know there are maybe it's a karate school and there there are um you know conditioning things makawara all over the place right like you know the type of school i'm I'm talking about, and, and, and I yep. suspect a lot of the people watching or listening do as well. If that school came out and and offered um, a black belt club with a fancy uniform with, you know, a bunch of colors on it and, um, you know, demo team and, and stuff like that, it would seem inauthentic. Yeah, it would be somewhat of a gimmick. It wouldn't be right. The... And how do you know it's a gimmick? Because the people training there go, huh? Really? Yeah. Okay. Whereas I know plenty of schools who have demo teams and it's a wonderful recruitment retention strategy and they have different color uniforms. Sometimes it's because of, of programs they're in or rank that they hold or other reasons and it works great for them and nobody bats an eye because it's part of their culture. Yep. In fact, in some of those same schools, if people showed up and you asked them to do conditioning drills or wear an all-white uniform, they'd raise their eyebrow and go, really? Mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. So now that we've got that out of the way, are there are there any things that are universally gimmicky? Um, I... I... Something runs to my brain, but I don't know that I, I've not yet determined whether it's a gimmicky thing, but uh, I have seen schools that will do like parents night out or, mm -hmm. you know, date night and drop your kid off. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just, I feel like that turns more into, we're going to babysit your child while you go have a date with your significant other. And it's not a karate class it, or, or, or a martial art class. And and I think most of the schools that do that would fully acknowledge that it's not. Some of them do it as revenue. Yeah. And they open it up to the community. Others do it as, and, and I think there's something important to talk about here. And others do it as an exclusive benefit of being part of that school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I think that the there's value there in potentially recruiting students. And there's also value in the culture of a school of people hanging out yeah, and being friends. Yeah, I see that. You know, so it, could it be done in a gimmicky way? Sure. Is it necessarily gimmicky? No. And again, it comes down to what is the culture of that school? What is an authentic offering? Mm -hmm. So to, to sum it all up there, be authentic. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense. I, and I guess I could see how it could come across as gimmicky but i see the reasons for it to not be considered a gimmick if your school i i know i know your school i know how your school operates if your school all of a sudden had a parents night out this coming weekend i'd go really that would surprise me that's yep. where it's hmm is this being authentic yeah okay uh what else how else is it not like our training because you know we didn't really say it but i think everybody understands training is not gimmicky you can look for shortcuts you can look for these secret ways to train and it, it just doesn't work you see this with a lot of uh quote keyboard warriors i'm gonna take these elements of this style and these elements of this style and these elements of this style and then i'm gonna be the best thing ever and the irony is they've trained maybe six months in one 
thing that is none of those 10 years ago. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if there's no shortcuts, is there, is there any, I'm, I'm trying to think of training and what it isn't. Um, oh, here's one. The more committed you are, the better the results. That's mm -hmm. not a, that's not a, we're going back to the, the ways it is alike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The more committed you are to your training, the more committed you are to operating a school, the more time you put in, the more energy you put in, the more passionate you are the more you're seeking out how to improve, the more all of those things will happen. Yeah, absolutely. If running your school is an afterthought, and and I think I want to be clear here, and I think I, I think I would speak for you too. Uh, we're not talking about quitting your day job and put and putting a hundred percent of your effort into running not necessarily your not, that not might necessarily, be appropriate, but, but it's not a requirement no nope, no nope. um you know there are a ton of school owners who have regular day jobs and they teach in the afternoon evening and that's fine but if you're like oh shoot i gotta go i gotta go teach like if if you're only putting half of your heart into running your school yep. that's not going to be great and the same is true if you're training if you're like um no, it's Six. I guess. I guess I'll go to class today. I guess. I don't know. Whatever. Here's the most realistic example I can offer, and this is probably the one thing that I'm going to say today that is going to make some people unhappy. In the example you're talking about, in school owner, likely the only instructor, has a full time job, and also teaches, maybe afternoons, evenings, weekends. Yep. If it is not uncommon for that person to show up late to their own classes because of their day job, everybody sees that. Yeah. Oh, but Jeremy, it takes, you know, sometimes start your classes 30 minutes later. Yeah. Create yep. more of a buffer. For you to show up late to your own class tells people it is not a priority. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And if that just triggered you i'd encourage you to think about why probably because your classes are important and you are probably frustrated that you can't give them more time how do you do that right yeah yeah that's a good point there's no there, nobody ever said classes have to start on you know at the hour and the half hour classes could start yeah. at quarter off yeah quarter after 10 after it's okay. Mm -hmm. The world will adjust. Yep, absolutely. Our kids' class starts starts at five forty five. And did 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 anyone come to you and say, "Well, why don't you start at five thirty or 6? Have they have nope. they not been able to wrap their heads around that? Right? Like it's not that hard. But if you were to start it at five thirty, it wouldn't work. That's why you're starting at five forty five. Yep, exactly. Okay. So what else we got? Um, I'm, try, I'm, I'm thinking of lessons I've learned in my own training. Ah, here's one. Sometimes taking a big step back and looking at things in a different way, whether that's solo or with a fresh set of eyes can be really yep. valuable. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think... Can a person train on their own with no help from anybody else? Yes, mm -hmm. it can be done. Absolutely. But it's much harder to get forward progress that way. Can you run a business 100% by yourself with no outside external help in any way, shape or form? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely you can. But having someone else to look at things from a different perspective can absolutely help. Mm -hmm. The majority of what I provide in my consulting role to martial arts and non-martial arts businesses is that alternate perspective. Yeah. The thing that, that everything is rooted in and maybe you operate a school and you have, you know, negative dollars. I know schools that run at a loss just because they're so passionate about what they do. Some of these schools even become nonprofits and fundraise to, to cover the gap. And, and the instructor is, you know, the owner doesn't pay themselves. That's fine. I'm not saying that that's a wrong way to handle it. But there are free ways you could do this. Find somebody else who has a small school. And maybe there's a, 
Oh, maybe maybe you trade classes once in a while. Maybe you have that person watch you teach classes. Maybe you have a, a weekly or monthly call. You get on the phone and and say, hey, here's a thing I'm struggling with. What do you think? There are so many ways to handle this if you want to. Just as the same way, if you're struggling with a form or you're struggling with uh, an element of your sparring or your self-defense, there are so many resources available to you that are, require just a little bit of desire and time that if you... If you're not solving the problem, it says either you don't know about the problem or you don't want to solve it. Those are really the only two options. Yeah, that's a great point. So if you think about if, if anybody out there is a school owner and they have a problem and they're looking for what can I do with this, we just laid out a whole bunch of things you can do. You can talk to people. You can talk to your, your uh, contemporaries because... I'm not aware of anywhere in the world that doesn't have other, mar you know, that has just one martial arts school. You know, maybe you've got to drive 30 minutes to get to another one, but they're all over the place. Even yeah. in tiny little Vermont, we've got them all over the place. <laughs> exactly. Right. So if they're here, I imagine they're everywhere. Um, oh, here's another way that they're similar. Don't badmouth people in the class. Mm -hmm. And recognize that there is an appropriate time and place for criticism. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if I'm a, you know, senior student and I turn to, you know, uh, a younger student, younger in terms of rank, not necessarily age, and I tear them a new one in the middle of class, I'm, I'm probably going to get something some kind of disciplinary action because that's not appropriate mm -hmm. just as if i'm in a school owner i should not badmouth my students or their families or some any you know something like that to others yep yep i've known school owners who have done this their schools did not last yeah and i think you could also take it a step further and uh badmouth other schools as well mm. as a school owner um because there's no you, reason to there's no well a there's no reason to like there's no benefit i mean i would love to know the benefit of doing that there is there is no I'm, I'm i'm letting them know that this other school isn't as good and that you know if they were to decide to leave here and go there they wouldn't have as good of experience so i'm trying to keep them from making a bad decision andrew yeah they, they'd figure that out on their own you don't need to tell them that's my, the that's only my... reason they would consider going to that other school is because you left something open Correct. for them. They're not having a great time. Yeah. But the same is true with your training. You know, I'm not, as a student, I'm not going to badmouth other students. As an instructor of, of this school, I'm not going to badmouth other instructors of other schools. Why bother? Yep. Focus on you. Every bit of energy you throw, you direct elsewhere is energy you could have directed on what you actually have control and influence Correct. over. Yeah. So we've got a pretty good list. Is there anything we're missing? I, I no. I think actually that took us a lot deeper into the conversation than I expected. I didn't think we'd go that long. And and if you're listening or watching and you th think of something that we've yeah. missed, tell us. Absolutely. We'd love to hear it. Absolutely. And as always, I said at the top, if you don't like what we say, it's not we're, we're not telling you what to think. We're telling you our beliefs and we're hopeful that it will inspire thought and conversation for you. And if you feel strongly about something, let us know. You know, you can you can email us, you know, Andrew at Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio dot com, Jeremy at Whistlekick dot com. You know, we're there. If, uh, sometimes we have a good conversation about episodes. Not all, all not always, but sometimes. In the Facebook group, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio behind the scenes. You yep. join them. All right. Is that it? I think that's it. Okay. All right. Uh, our social media is at Whistlekick. Remember, you can support us in a whole bunch of ways, but our favorite ones are the Patreon and the discount code podcast15. But we've also got the family page, whistlekick.com slash family. It's a thing you got to type in, but if you do, yeah, there's the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Whistlekick. But if you do type in Whistlekick.com slash family, it's kind of like a mini Patreon. I update it weekly, and there's a bunch of behind-the-scenes stuff, as well as 
um, the whole list of all the things you can do to help us out. Some of them are free. Some of them take some time. Some of them take some money. But we give you options. All right. Uh, training programs available at whistlekick.com. If you're interested, we just rolled out an updated version of the Flex program. That's up to version 1.3. And if you're interested in having me come out to your school for a seminar, reach out. We can make that happen. All right. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, a great day. day.